Hello everyone, this is Fuller from JustMakeGames.com and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to create caves with voxel objects in the CryEngine 3 SDK or in the CryEngine 3 Sandbox. The first thing you need is a cliff or a mountain site created with the terrain modifier and you need to have it already painted. If you don't know how to do this, just check our channel or check JustMakeGames.com on tutorial on how to modify terrain. Next thing we're going to do is go to the roller bar, select miscellaneous and select a voxel object. Just create one into your level. As you can see, I just put it next to my cliff. It has to be a little bit outside of your cliff. I'm going to show you why in a few seconds. Now as you can see, the voxel object is just an empty cube. Inside this cube we will be able to create cliffs, caves, etc. etc. Uh, it's very important that you do not make your voxel object too big. Then it's, it doesn't have to be bigger than it needs to be. So here I'm just going to split it into 8 parts and delete the other 7 parts that I don't need. If your voxel object is bigger than it should be, then you're just going to use too much processing power for no reason and that's never a good thing if you're creating games. Next thing we're going to want to do is create holes into our terrain. In, the f in, the f in a later stage in this tutorial we will copy the terrain into the voxel object, but the original terrain will still be above it. So if we want to make a cave, we need to make a hole into our terrain first, so we can see the voxel object through the terrain, and then we will be able to make a hole into our voxel object. Just So just follow along. First I'm going to the terrain modifier and I'm just selecting holes, and I'm just making a holes in my inside my terrain where my cave entrance is gonna uh, going to be. You can just mess a bit with the brush radius and until you get the pretty basic shape. Don't worry if it's not perfect, you're gonna have an exact copy of your terrain inside your voxel object anyway. If you make too much holes or if you want to correct it later on, you can just select the remove hole tool and remove holes again. Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to go back to the voxel object, select its properties and we're going to copy the terrain inside our voxel object as I just explained but first we're going to change some params it's really important that you change these otherwise you can run into some nasty effects that you don't want the first thing you want to turn on is LOD this is going to make our voxel object less processing intensive we also want to turn on ambient occlusion this makes the shadows inside the cave more realistic and we also want to change smart base color to true when you are done with these parameters, just copy your terrain inside your voxel object. As you can see, we have a, ter a copy of our terrain inside the voxel cube now, but the position is not entirely correct. This could be because I have moved the cube a little bit. It's really important that you never rotate your voxel object. I can easily fix that by just moving my voxel object a little bit back, and there we go. I see that I have a little hole in my terrain, but that's no problem. You can always fix that with the remove hole tool, as I showed you before. It's really a bit. It's a matter of fine tuning before you get it right. As I'm demonstrating here, I just have a copy of my terrain inside my voxel cube, and my hole in my terrain is where I'm going to be able to select my voxel objects to make caves. Next, I'm going back to the terrain bar. I'm going to instead of the layer painter, I'm going to the voxel painter, and I select hard subtract. Then I put the brush radius a bit higher, and I just click once. There we go, I created a hole inside my voxel object. As you can see, hard subtract only requires one click and it's going to make a pretty big hole. If you want to be a bit more precise, you can always use soft subtract. This is really a tool that is made for fine tuning your cave. It's going to be really processing intensive, so don't be afraid if your computer frame rate goes down to 5 or even 3. Voxels are really processing intensive. Next thing we're going to do is paint our materials inside our cave. We're going to have all the materials available that we have available for painting our terrain. But the only major difference here is that we have to select the diffuse color manually. Otherwise we're going to have a white terrain inside our cave. So that's why we put on the smart base color property in our, uh, in our voxel objects. I'm just going to paint a little bit here. I'm not going to make a really detailed cave because it's just a tutorial but you get the general idea in no time you will be able to create entire caves, underground tunnels or even an underground city just use your imagination one more thing is 
w one more thing I want to show you is that you have to be careful with the camera following terrain button as I show you here if you have the camera following terrain button enabled your camera is not going to go inside the cave but it's just going to go to the top of your cliff because it follows your terrain so make sure you disable it if you want to go inside of your cave let's go in game and look at our cave there you go you just created your first basic cave in the CryEngine 3 editor